Hello, I am Dr. Indranil, one of the Reproductive Medicine Consultant at Genome Fertility Center. And today I will be talking to you about the risk and complications of the IVF procedure. As a doctor, when we first meet you and we tell you that you need to have IVF, one of the first questions that comes to your mind is that how safe is the procedure? Now, IVF is pretty safe because people who undergo IVF, they don't have much health problem or the pregnancy problem. But what we do is that we explain you about the whole procedure, what is the risk of the procedure and the individualized risk, that is what is the risk for you. Okay, suppose you have some health problem like blood sugar, blood pressure or heart diseases. And then with your consent, after you uh, understand the whole thing, we uh, go through IVF. To understand the risk of the procedure better, you need to know about the procedure. Now we can divide IVF into few steps. Step number one, that we have to stimulate your ovaries. That means we have to give you injections to make the follicles in your ovary. Step number two is that we have to put you under sleep like anesthesia and then we put a needle inside and collect the eggs from the ovaries. And that's third step is that we uh, put the eggs and the sperm in a petri dish which we call IVF or we inject the uh, sperm into the egg which we call ICSI and make the embryo. And the last step or the most important step is that we put this embryo inside your womb. Now each step has a complications. Now in the first step where we uh, stimulate your ovaries, we need to give some injections for wonder droplets. Now if we give our injections to your body, what can happen is that you can have allergy uh, because of the injections, you can react to it. Now these are very minor and after a couple of days of injections, usually things that is done. Now when you are giving that injection, the second thing that happens is that how you are responding to it. Now when we give these injections, the dose depends upon your age, your body weight and your risk factors. Now what happens when we have the injections, you may not respond at all or you respond too much to it and nothing is uh, too much is good. It may happen that we are giving you a high dose of injections but you uh, may not develop any follicles. That's because of your age or because you don't have a good ovarian result. Uh, then you have to cancel the cycles. In our clinic we have seen that around 5% uh, cancellation rate after we start that injection. Now the second thing that uh, will happen that when we give you a, a dose of injections, you respond too much. Okay, that means you have too many follicles which we call the ovarian hyperstimulations or when we google it we find it OHSA. Now what is this OHSA or ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome? Uh, what happens is that after we do the egg uh, pickup, uh, you will have a big ovary which is multicystic, okay, that is because of your hyperstimulations. Uh, you may suffer from uh, nausea or vomiting. Sometimes you have accumulation of uh, fluid in your tummy, a protein which to it, which we call ascites. And in rare circumstances, your kidney may not work properly or you have, can have clots in different parts of your body. Uh, ovarian hyperstimulation, uh, a mild uh, degree is quite common, one third of the patient who have IVF has a mild uh, ovarian hyperstimulation. But in less than 1% of the cases, it can be moderate or severe. If it is severe, then you may need a hospital ad um, admission. Now the thing is, if you have any of the symptoms, if it is mild, I will advise you to report to the clinic or to your doctor because I uh, don't think that you are wasting our time. It is a thing that you have to be safe because safety is a priority of our children. Okay, so after you have this ovarian stimulations and your ovary has multiple follicles and uh, the follicles are <coughs> ready for a pickup, uh, what we do is a egg retrieval, which is usually done in the general anesthesia. Now how it is done, uh, what happens is that we put you to sleep and then with the ultrasound guidance we put a fine needle inside the tummy and we get the eggs from the follicles. Now while we do that, there is a very small risk that we may injure the organs which is around the uterus, that means the bladder, the uh, bowels or very very rarely the other adjoining organs. Now the other risk associated with the procedure is that uh, you know the risk of general anesthesia. Now anesthesia is pretty safe and the procedure is only for 10 to 15 days so I don't think you have uh, need much uh, to worry about it. The other thing is that uh, unfortunately it may happen though in the scan we see that there are plenty of follicles but when actually we do the pickup we don't find any eggs at all and that's what we call in our medical terms uh, empty follicle syndrome. 
and it's quite unfortunate that you know after spending a huge amount of money and with the other tension you went through it unfortunately we won't be able to collect any egg now the third uh, uh, state in IVF is that we mix the eggs and the sperms in a bit dish, what we call the IVF or we do ICSI. Now uh, there is a small chance uh, of less than 5% is that a fertilization failure. If there is any defect in the sperm or in the egg, when we mix them together, our embryo is not formed. So this risk is always here. The final step of IVF is to put this embryo inside the womb. Now, uh, usually it's a pretty simple procedure, okay, and we try to keep it as simple and uh, as possible because this is, a, I consider, as one of the most important states. But it may happen that, you know, uh, we find uh, to put this uh, in, the, uh, in the cavity a bit difficult. What happens is that if we think that it will be a difficult procedure, we do a mock transfer, that is before uh, the embryo transfer, the actual embryo transfer, uh, we put the catheter inside the womb and find out how easy or difficult it is. And uh, suppose it is a surprise for us, on that very day we find that you know, it's a very difficult transfer. What we do is that we freeze your embryos and at a later date uh, we call you back and we uh, put the embryos. In between we try to find out via hysteroscopy or via mock transfer that what went wrong and what we can do to put the embryos in place. Now, so, uh, what I mentioned to you so far are the procedural risk of IVF. Uh, there are other risks also, like if you fall pregnant, uh, there will be risk of miscarriage. The risk of miscarriage in IVF is saying like a natural pregnancy around 10 to 15 percent. The other risk is ectopic pregnancy which we put around 3 to 5 percent. Because once you put the embryo in the uterus, it might happen the embryo goes into the tube and uh, implants there which we call ectopic pregnancy. The another risk factor is multiple pregnancy and we consider twins or triplets a complication of IVF because they have their own risk of uh, like preterm level and premature birth or increases of cesarean sections or complications like high blood pressure or diabetes in the mother. The another question which you uh, often ask us in the clinic is that how uh, are these IVF uh, babies, whether these babies are normal or if there is an increased risk. So far, whatever evidence we have, we can uh, say you safely that the babies born by IVF is almost same like a natural conception. But again, to be 100% we need to uh, have more research. I think that's for today and I cover the topic of this uh, IVF related complications. If you have any queries, you can contact Juno. And at Juno, we give a very one-to-one uh, -one customized care. So we uh, always tell you that what would be the risk for you and we try to uh, do our best so that you don't have any complications. Thank you very much.